You know, Sweet Tea gets me thinking about my very first job out of high school. It was a sales job where basically I would travel all up and down the East Coast. I even made it out West a couple times. And every time I would go up to the North and I would be in a restaurant and the waiter would ask, what would you like to drink? I'd say, Sweet Tea, please. He'd look at me, a little confused, and just be like, well, we have we don't have sweet tea, but we have raspberry tea. I looked, I'm like, no thanks, I'll just have some water. And when he walked away, I'm like, why, why, why is the first reaction for people up north to say we have we have raspberry tea instead of sweet tea? That's like it's not even the same thing. Like I understand it's a drink. That's like going to a wings place and someone says, uh, what, "What kind of dipping sauce do you want? Yeah, uh, can I have some ranch dressing, please?" Uh, we don't have ranch, but we have blue cheese. It's like, yeah, I understand that's a dipping sauce, but that doesn't taste the same. It's, it's, it's like it's not the same thing. Why do people think it's the same thing? Mm-mm-mm. I just don't understand. But today is not about sweet tea. It's actually about a few tips that can help you become a better software developer, software engineer, whatever I decided to title this video. These few tips are something that have helped me become better, and I'm not an expert at any of these, but I'm trying to get better and better as the days go on, as I learn more and more, and as I just work with uh, developers that are better than myself and learning from them. I'm taking these tips from them to me to improve my skills as a software developer. So, the first one starts off with a little story. If you follow me on Twitter, link below, at Knight, then you know that a couple days ago, when I was about to head off of work, I clicked update and shut down on Windows 10. And then the next morning when I came into work, I had this 0xc 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 error code and I tried everything under the sun for like three hours straight at work trying to fix this so I didn't have to do a fresh install of Windows. I ended up essentially wasting all that time because I exhausted all possibilities and still wasn't able to save it and ended up just fresh installing Windows 10 as it is and resetting up my whole entire environment, local host and my virtual machine all over again. And that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. You'd be surprised what 10 months worth of work has accumulated on your computer that you kind of need. But one thing that entire event actually taught me is that you want to make sure that you're committing small and you're committing often. That is tip number one. Now don't get committing code confused with pushing your code. The only reason I use that example is because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you push all of your commits up to the code base in case I don't know, I guess something crazy like this happens, or if somebody else needs to work maybe on that code base or on a similar feature that you're working on, then they're able to see what you've done, pull your code, so on and so forth. One of the big reasons why you want to commit small, commit often, is because you want to be able to revert back to something in case you were kind of lost. So let's say you take a subtask off the board, off your sprint board, and you pull it from to do over to in progress. Now although you do have this big project, you've broken up this big project into sprints, you've taken the sprints, you've broken those up into tasks, and you've taken the tasks and broken those up into subtasks, many subtasks, like the one you just pulled over into in progress, you kind of have to break down into even smaller subtasks, sub subtasks if you will, I don't know. And we'll, we'll just call them smaller tasks for now. Those smaller tasks are essentially going to be your commits. You want to be able to make a small, like let's say you're implementing some type of edit feature for a comment, you need to do the edit button. You need to make sure that edit button toggles on the form for you to edit. You need to make sure that form, when displayed, has the value of that comment. Because if you're editing a comment, you want that value to show up in the form that you're editing that comment for. And then you need to make sure you write the web service in order to update the comment, so you need to do a put request, and that'll update the comment. And then maybe you have a cancel button and you have a few other aspects of this small subtasks, and those are your smaller tasks. If you implement the user interface for the edit button, commit that. But then once you write the web service for that edit button, commit that. Now if you go in and you start to work on something else within that edit feature and you get completely lost, instead of reverting all the way back to before you even implemented the user interface, you just have to revert back one commit instead of all of these 
non-existent commits. So if you commit small and often, you have a smaller gap to revert back to in case you mess up and just need to reset the code altogether. And then at the end of the day, make sure you push up all of your working commits and make sure all of your commits have good details, detailed commit messages. Your commit message needs to answer what did you do and why did you do it? You, you ought not just type in, I created the edit component. It's like, yeah, I can see you created the edit component because there's a edit component right there along with your commit. Like that's, that's what you committed so I can see, but why did you do it? Some things are self-explanatory but it's best to just make it as detailed as possible. So if it's Joe Schmo over there, he can come over and see exactly what you committed and why you did it. So tip number one, commit small workable chunks of code with detailed commit messages stating what you did and why you did it. And if I may cut in right here, I wanna address something. A couple weeks ago, I talked about doing a 50K giveaway. Now we're, what, like almost 70K? But don't worry, I'm still gonna do the 50K giveaway. And I asked y'all last week, what do you think I should give away? Many of y'all had very good comments. I've been working my best to give away some of those big comments, but uh, we're gonna figure out next week what I'll actually be giving away. But many of y'all commented that I should be giving away two months of Skillshare for free for the first 500 people that use the link in the description below. And although that's not gonna be the 50K giveaway, that is something I'm gonna be giving away in this video. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, I mean, y'all know what Skillshare is. Skillshare is essentially an online learning platform for creators, you and I, coding, photography, videography, business, whatever. You hop on and you take whatever course that they offer that you want to take. Think of it as YouTube, but premium. I know you already know what it is, but if you are interested in anything that is listed on Skillshare, this is the time to do it. I'd highly recommend and really appreciate y'all using the link down below. That helps me out, it helps you out because you get that for free, and it also helps the brand out because that's what they're paying for. And back to the regularly scheduled program. Tip number two is get familiar with your tools, especially your IDE, and get familiar with all of these shortcuts. You using a mouse right here is going to waste you time in the long run than being able to just do everything from your keyboard. Something that I actually did, because I use uh, Visual Studio Code as well as Eclipse, Visual Studio Code for you know the front end and the Angular and that type of stuff, TypeScript, and then Eclipse for Java, of course. And j just to clarify that for a second, because I know someone's gonna say something, Eclipse is an IDE, Visual Studio Code is a text editor, or code editor, whatever you wanna talk about. We'll just, we'll just refer to them as work environments. For my work environments, one thing that I do, now that I've learned more about them, is I make sure my formatting is set. So there are settings that you can go in within your work environments, and when you save a file, it essentially auto formats it. There are a lot of little nuances to it and what you want may be different from what I want. I make sure that my formatting is consistent with the rest of the teams, but it just makes it nice. If you didn't indent something properly or if you want you know, parentheses or brackets in a particular position and how that's formatted, you can set that up in the IDE so every time you save it, it makes sure that all of those are consistent. Something else that I've done is I created a little like shortcuts cheat sheet for each one because the more you use your mouse, the less efficient you can be. If there's anything on your text editor that you're using your mouse for, there's probably a keyboard shortcut for it. So what you ought to do is either find a, a, a some type of cheat sheet or create one on your own. Just look at all of the short keyboard shortcuts for your work environment. They're, they're listed there. Maybe you can change them if you want. And just keep them over on a separate screen. And every time you reach for your mouse, say, hold up, look over, see if you can do it with your keyboard. And the more you do it, it will be a repetitive task, then you'll learn it and you won't even have to refer to your cheat sheet anymore. At least I don't. So the more you do something, you know, it's a habit and then you're able to remember it. So that's tip number two. Make sure you familiarize yourself with your work environment. This is a tool that you're using every single day. You better know the ins and outs of it, at least to make yourself more efficient. And tip number three, this is the final tip of this video and more of like a soft skills tip, if you will. Don't be ashamed to admit you don't know something. There'll be many instances in your life, especially at work, but you know, as soft skills are, this, can, this is applicable to any part of your life where you're talking about something, somebody is referencing something in particular that you don't know about. Let's, let's say like JBoss, for example, because that's what something I use at work. And they may even ask you when they're referencing JBoss, like, do you, do you understand JBoss? And if you don't, 
say you don't. Say no. Like either just say no or no. Uh, would you mind explaining it? Or maybe you know a little bit of it. Just say, yeah, I know a little bit of it, but could you elaborate to give me a better understanding? And as long as this person you're talking to isn't a complete POS, they're going to explain to you without judging you. They're going to understand that you're always learning, especially in your career. You don't know everything, even if it's something that they use every single day. And maybe you have similar skills to them, but that's not the exact tool or framework or technology that you used. That's okay. And people will be happy to help Maybe it's for their own personal benefit because they're like, oh, I know something they don't know. Well, this is all about X, Y, and Z, and they'll explain it to you, or they're just genuinely trying to help you, and they want you to understand everything as much as they know. I mean, after all, if you're working on their team, they should want you to be as smart as possible. So if you aren't familiar with something or you have a question and they know the answer, then they ought to help you, right? I mean, that's kind of how a team works. I mean, that's how my team works, so maybe I'm just lucky, but I think that's how all teams should work. So for tip number three, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Don't be ashamed that you don't know something. And tip number four, don't compare raspberry tea to sweet tea. I don't understand. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, the first 500 people sign up Skillshare link down below, get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. I like free, you like free. Hell, even the company who is offering this likes free, obviously, or else they wouldn't be offering it for free. So take advantage of that while you can. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. Does that ever get anybody to subscribe? Something else I need to ask you guys to do is like turn on that notification bell. I've never asked anybody to ever turn on my notification bell. But like, supposedly some channels aren't really getting all of their videos shared in the subscription box. I don't know. I don't know if that's happening to y'all, but uh, I'd appreciate the bell turn on. Until next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>